Your take on this, what I think Hallie says is, is, is crucial for us to understand. Something did change today. There may be people who didn't think there was any legitimacy left to Donald Trump or this presidency, but the fact is this is different. Today is different than it was six hours ago. I hope so, but here's part of the problem. We still don't have any Republican leadership speaking out saying, you know what, something has changed. Me the media is saying something has changed, Democrats are saying something has changed, but this lack of separation of powers, the fact that this president has kept his thumb on his entire party and they've mm -hmm. fallen in line, the fact that they're still talking about Kavanaugh, we shouldn't be talking about a Supreme Court justice nominee, not when this is going on. So I hope something has changed. I hope something, um, someone is going to look into the fact that Donald Trump has a 40-year history of leaning on the lines of legality, of lying, of surrounding himself with people who are of ill repute, to say the very least. Anyone in New York knows this. Anyone who can read has seen the documentation. I don't know if chickens are coming home to roost mm. because when he's at his rally, he's already yep. established that the media is a liar. Right. They're all that lying. Mueller don't is, to what they is have to say. out to get him. So he's already created the scenario where truth isn't truth. Right. And he's been yep. doing that since the campaign, that everyone is after him and it's just up to him so every, and his 33 percent of supporters to sort of it's us against the world because everyone's trying to just make up stories that aren't true about us. So while everything has changed, maybe nothing has changed. Bill Crystal, you and people like you have been trying to take your party back for a while. One might say strategically. Uh, you've been handed a gift today. Maybe this is a moment in which you can call up people and say, come on, guys, putting out statements about how this doesn't implicate him in the Russian uh, investigation isn't really the relevant part of this right now. Your president is lying. What do we do about it? Look, I do think things have changed. I mean, reality has changed. It's that we now have a guilty uh, a plea from the president's personal lawyer, with whom he was very, very close uh, in many ways, and a guilty verdict on the president's campaign manager. Mm -hmm. Those are facts. You can say truth's not truth. He said, she said. That's right. what, we a, accept in this country that and, verdicts are. And, and guilty are verdicts have a real effect. So I look, there's a, is there a hardcore of Trump supporters who will never desert him? Sure, there was with Nixon, too. He had 50% approval among Republicans until the very end. But there are a lot of reluctant Trump supporters. And I think at this point, they get more reluctant in their support, less willing to simply say, well, he's, you know, he tweets a lot. He's kind of a vulgar guy. But we got the Supreme Court justices and we got the tech. I do think it begins to change things. And I think their last line of defense in a way now of his defenders, you've been reading a couple of those quotes, yep. is, well, it's not Russia. But how do we know it's not Russia? Michael Cohen seems to be cooperating. Mm -hmm. Michael Cohen may well know about the Trump Tower meeting. He may well know if the president knew about the Trump Tower yeah, meeting. And we definitely know that Manafort does. And that if it was at that meeting, yeah. if he flips, but he hasn't flipped yet, but, right. but Cohen has. And Cohen was in touch with Trump throughout 2016 and 2017. He has contemporaneous knowledge and probably documentary evidence and phone records mm -hmm. and of Trump's actions and all kinds of aspects of the obstruction side of it, as well as perhaps the collusion side of it. So I don't really buy the argument that this isn't important for the Russia side of the investigation. The point you've been making. But, but, yes, but you know what's really striking to me is how history has repeated itself here. Uh, back in the Nixon days in the Watergate, Herb Kambach, who was Nixon's personal lawyer, was actually his bag man, sort of had the same role as Michael Cohen, was the guy who carried around all the cash, the illegal cash to spread around. He wound up pleading guilty. And then you also have Manafort being convicted today who was Trump's campaign manager. And you had John Mitchell, who was Nixon's campaign manager, who had been convicted. So what I'm really struck by is just how history has repeated itself mm -hmm. today with both a president's personal lawyer and his campaign manager. Natasha Bertrand, let's, uh, let's just play this out just a, a little bit more. Um, if, if there's somewhere between 33 and 40 percent of, of, of Americans who continue to support Donald Trump, um, as the evidence piles on, that gets harder to do. But there are a lot of people that, that Bill was just talking about, Republicans who are not interested in supporting Democratic candidates. They're not interested in, in, in upending their party. They would like their party back. How does this play out politically? Forget We've talked a lot about the legal side, but how does this play out politically for people who are not Democrats, who are reluctant supporters of Donald Trump, who can't get away from this evidence anymore? 
Well, it's remarkable how the narrative has really been shifting. I mean, it used to be, of course, that there was no communication at all between the campaign and Russia. That was Paul Manafort's line throughout the campaign. Then it was, well, there may have been a few contacts, but they were really, you know, uh, inconsequential. And now we're seeing this new kind of talking point emerge, which is people on the right are saying, well, it would have been kind of a dereliction of duty for the campaign not to have taken these meetings with the Russians and to see what kind of dirt that they had on Clinton. So politically, I think that even if a ton of evidence came out that definitively said that the campaign conspired with Russia to undermine the election and to coordinate with the Russians to to get this dirt on Clinton and in that way they promised you know for example sanctions relief or they promised to upend the entire international order um, that we've you know adhered mm -hmm. to for decades then I think that you know people on the other side of the aisle would say on, on the Republican side would say well you know this was all this was standard this was just opposition yeah. research it seems like that argument has really started to take I, I to take they, hold in right wing circles. I mean, I think they've made that argument, Natasha, but I, I don't think it will really take hold enough. I, I think at that point you start to lose enough House members, enough senators, enough party leaders that impeachment becomes a real possibility. Mm -hmm. If there is real collusion, yeah. or if there is well, real collusion, Bill. not not Trump <laughs> vaguely knew about some meeting and Christina, you're, if there's you're real collusion on the on, on the WikiLeaks. You, you uh, think it changes you're, things? You're totally. more optimistic than I. You know, maybe because for the past two years we've witnessed a race. -based president who's had who's you know caucus with white supremacists to the silence of his entire party so I don't know why all of a sudden they would wake up and say well, you know what this is a bridge too far well they're not many saying bridges that, do we need look I'm not defending them but I'm just not saying as a practical matter the Democrats are likely to win the House of Representatives in November mm -hmm. if they win the if House, Russia doesn't collude and actually affect our elections that's a big I mean that's a possibility it is but we looks haven't for addressed now, 2016 yet. I agree with that also they should have done more but it looks for now that the Democrats will win the House if they do and if there's real evidence on either the collusion or the obstruction mm -hmm. side and maybe incidentally I'm not so sure that the the cooperation being involved is in the just in the payoff isn't enough. That's a real crime. It's mm -hmm. a federal crime. Yeah. If you're the House of Representatives, you, what do you say? Well, we're just not going to look into this. They have to at least have hearings. But that sort of. But, but, but these are the same people who are trying far? to push through Kavanaugh. Democrats. The same I mean, look. Obviously, if Republicans the Republicans hold the House. That'll be a different story. But I think today's events have been much less make likely. One point? Much less likely that Republicans hold the House. And I think once you get into real, this we saw this with Clinton. Once you get into real impeachment hearings and real looking at the evidence and real, it's a little mm -hmm. harder for people to say, well, look, there's really evidence that it's a crime, not. That he's a distasteful, unpleasant, Natasha? even bigoted guy. I think it changes. <laughs> I just want to make one final point, which is I think that Trump, if he did conspire with the Russians, and, and all evidence points to you know him doing that, then he did it in a way that Vladimir Putin would do it, which is to preserve plausible deniability by farming out the most significant aspects of such a conspiracy to people like Michael Cohen, to people like Paul Manafort, to people like George Papadopoulos, just like Vladimir Putin farmed it out to hackers that perhaps were not directly directly associated with the Russian government to preserve that kind of plausible deniability. So if we take that to be true, and if people like Michael Cohen are found to, for example, have traveled to Prague to pay off these hackers, if Trump himself didn't do it, then I can definitely foresee Republicans saying, well, the, the president himself may not have authorized this. Well, How do we know? Michael, unless Michael Cohen testifies that he did tell the president about it, or unless there's contemporaneous evidence that he did. This is why to Cohen To which Donald Trump could been... respond, well, he was given a plea deal to maybe reduce his prison right. sentence. I mean, he surrounds himself. Well, they can say whatever they want, but I, I do think it's a, I mean, look, I'm not defending, I, I, I would, I'm not defending I, the Republicans. I'm not, I'm not saying they, but, but there isn't a huge Christina's amount point, of rationalization that's possible. You're awfully but optimistic. I think, that no, but I just think the rich. guilty plea well, and the guilty right. verdict make a big difference, I think. And yeah. we don't know what all those tapes are. We, I mean, Michael Cohen has got a whole series of tapes. You know, what is so on those Omarosa. tapes? <laughs> we got another Omarosa tape yeah. up in about the two and a half minutes, actually. Right. I can't imagine what's on that. Um, all right, uh, Christina, to, to you, I, I, and I, I hear you, when's the bridge that that's a bridge too far going to show up, right? To a lot of people, I think maybe today might have been it, but a lot of people, the These are the same the people e -tape who were waiting it. for the N-word three days ago, right? Yeah. I mean, so we know that Donald Trump has surrounded himself and possibly given instructions to Michael Cohen, someone who he has trusted for a very long time. Mm -hmm. We know that Donald Trump is engaged in this behavior in Atlantic City, in Queens, in all over, you know, the five right. boroughs for decades. This is just, you know, a con that's gone a little too far and now the federal government is involved. <laughs> but I don't see, and this is, I've been bringing the alarm on the show for months now, the separation of powers is not working because the Republican Party has not stood up to this president, not once. So even if there is a guilty verdict, 
from Manafort, even though Cohen has turned himself in eight counts here, eight counts there, I still think that they have been so willing to move the goalpost every single time with this president, no matter what he says, no matter what he does, right? The fact that he was even sworn in as president after the Access Hollywood tape let me know for a fact that the Republican Party is actually not working on behalf of the American people. They are working on behalf of Donald Trump. And he's been able to bully them into their silence. And I don't think that today changes much, unfortunately. I'm sure we'll hear what he has to say about uh, this at his, his rally. But Fox News is talking about, you know, a girl in Iowa and not this, mm -hmm. right? And tomorrow morning, we know he'll wake up and tweet and sort of, you know, besmirch the reputation of Michael Cohen and all the people around him yep. and really go back to Mueller. And this is obviously going to boil down to Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. The biggest threat, the bigger threat is that he is the pardon power, which I think is, I think someone said, yep. someone said, is the wild card. Might be floating that in his could compliments. Be, no, yeah. that could happen here. Yeah. Right. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.